Crazy indeed. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me this evening. I thought I'd do something a little different. Instead of doing an analysis on a, uh, a comic book, uh, an art review, or a story review, I thought I'd talk about something that might have a little bit more broad reach outside of simply comics, film, entertainment. And that is the concept of the Ash Conformity Experiment. And yeah, ahead of time, I'm going to warn you, there's going to be a little bit of ranting involved here, so you do have a rant alert. But Ash Conformity and you, or the 80-10-10 rule. Well, first off, who or what is the Ash Conformity Experiment? or the Ash Conformity Theory. The Ash Conformity Theory was a sociological theory that was presented that um, it was looking to see how individuals responded within a group dynamic where there were external influences on beliefs and opinions. And it was conducted by Solomon Ash in the 50s. And then there was the, the Crutchfield situation that expanded upon it. There was multiple other series, but I, I really just want to focus on <clears throat> the Ash Conformity, because I feel that from this we can learn a lot, especially when we look at social media. Because social media is driven by the concept of group dynamic, group think, agreeability, and that serotonin response of getting the like and the retweet. And these are basic, simple concepts, but sometimes it's the most basic, simple things that because they are all assumed to be true when we don't talk about them, um, they get lost in the weeds a little bit. So let's, let's address a few things. First, I'd like to say one thing, um, and that is a, a quote that I firmly believe in, and that is that um, there is no level of cowardice lower than that of the conformist other than the fashionable nonconformist. And that kind of is the, the bookend to the discussion that we're going to be having here this evening. So what did the Ash Conformity Experiments do? Well, primarily they demonstrated that you cannot rely on an outcome when you're talking to a group of people because the people at either end of that outcome or that discussion are going to be influenced by everybody in the middle. So if you walk up to a group of five people, and you say, what did you just see if they saw an event happen? The people towards the end are going to be more influenced by what the people at the beginning stated. Um, in the example of the Ash Conformity Experiment, they, they would continually show three lines. And they would say, you know, line A would be short, line B would be long, line C would be the longest. And say, well, next, these three lines, which one matches this line? And then they would show just line B. And everybody would answer individually. And it wasn't until actors were placed within the groups and those actors would say, well, obviously it's line C and it would become more emphatic that you would have people actually change their opinions. They, they, some people would fight and that's where the 80, 10, 10 rule comes into effect. So you have the group, the whole group, the, all of, all of the social media group, all of the society, all of whatever dynamic you want to be talking about, whatever dynamic you want to be measuring. And within that group, you're going to have three distinct groups. And this is slightly drifting away from the Ash Conformity Experiment, talking about some other psychological principles. But we're just going to throw them all in to discuss it. And that's the 80-10-10 rule. And that is that essentially the bottom 10% of this chart and the top 10% of this chart are going to be outliers. And in any group dynamic, you're going to have... 10% of the people, the respondents, the individuals that simply aren't paying attention, they don't care, they're not interested. And in, inherently, they will always go with the group dynamic. This could be because of a low self-opinion of themselves, because of a lack of interest. It, it really doesn't matter why. It just matters that that bottom 10% will always go with the middle. The top 10%, um, one out of every 10 in generic sense, will always contradict. They'll, they'll question. There's always, if everyone in the group is saying one thing, they're always going to take a step back and question. I'm painting with a very broad brush. I'm well aware of that. But where, where you find these things is especially prevalent in social media. And a lot of what I see on a daily basis um, on social media, especially with all of the events in the current event of the last few weeks, um, it's the, the knee-jerk response. That's the bottom 90%. 
the people that are questioning the knee-jerk response are usually in the top 10%. However, that being said, you also have the dichotomy of the split within the majority of the split within the minority, which is to say that the ash conformity concept, this 80, 10, 10 concept applies even within the individual groups. Um, you will have people within the lower 10% that are less interested than others that are more likely to be pressured by social influence. Um, if I'm very emphatic towards you on this is what you saw, and I pressure you and I pressure you and I pressure you, and you just give in simply because it's easier to give in. That's that's that bottom 10%. And there's varying degrees of that, and that's that 10, 80, 10 rule applied again. Within the middle, and yeah, at this point I do realize that I did put a 10% in the center thing. I threw this together pretty quick, so I apologize. Um, even within the middle, that is true. There are people that are begrudgingly going along with the group simply because they don't want to create social anxiety amongst themselves or they don't want to create any kind of a disturbance. There are those that just will go along to get along. And then there are those that go along simply because it's the easier path to do. That's also true within the, ten, the top 10%, those that question. You're always going to have those individuals that will question what the majority say. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what they say. They could say that water is wet and you're going to have somebody that's going to argue that water really isn't wet. It's just a, it's a state of being and you're just perceiving water that way. And they're, they're going to be able to debate the point because some people are just confrontational and always want to debate a point. But that's not what I want to get at. What I want to get at is this concept of the group dynamic and how important the group dynamic is on the 90%. And most people don't take the time. When you, when you respond to something, you're not, often people don't take the time to sit back and think. And this is especially true on social media. You don't think about the response. It's a knee-jerk reaction. You don't think about what you're doing. It's for that serotonin response. It's for that, those, you're, you're farming the like, you're farming the retweet. You're looking for that, that sense of belonging and that sense of being. And you're feeling something um, within your personality that's lacking in your life if you're turning to those and doing those things for these reasons. And I think this applies in more, in more senses than just the references that Ash was doing the, the experiment within. I think it applies within entertainment as well. I think it applies within current events. I think it applies with how we, how we digest information, with how we look at news. People inherently do not want to think more and more that's becoming apparent. They want to have everything wrapped up within a soundbite, wrapped up within a small package that you can open with the minimalist of effort so that you can have your, your talking point that you're going to address written for you so that you don't have to be your own writer, so that you don't have to guide your own path. You don't have to make the hardest of all things for an individual to make, that of the choice. Self-actualization is not important because somebody else can do it for you. And if somebody else can do it for you, then you also avoid the secondary biggest thing, which is responsibility. And if somebody else can make it for you, then you don't have the responsibility. You don't have the accountability. Well, I just heard. I just saw, I, th I think, but even when you say, I think, did you really think about it? How much time did you spend to come to that opinion? How much time was spent formulating your thoughts on that matter? Or did you just on a knee jerk reaction based off of your past understandings of things, what you've read up to this point, based off of what other people have said, the impactful nature of a simple individual that you look up to. These can all have effects. So where do we see this in entertainment? We see this in entertainment across a variety of views. But perhaps one of the most glaring is the prevalence of films that are terrible, but yet that people continually go see. They talk good about. You get hyped up in the media. People tell you that Captain Marvel is good, so people go and see Captain Marvel. And because all of the media is telling you Captain Marvel is good, Rotten Tomatoes says that Captain Marvel is good. You will have a good, strong chunk of the population that will say Captain Marvel is good. People inherently want to accept the positive message. They don't want to accept the negative message. Um, they will be influenced by those actors. 
So in the in the in the concept of the ash conformity experiment, you've got places like Rotten Tomatoes, places like these aggregate websites that do fan ratings. That if they're twisted in one way or another, if they're pushed one way or the other, positive or negative, then you get more people will go, oh, it's a good movie. Look at what the reviews say. Most people like this, therefore it must be good. Uh, just because most people like something doesn't mean it's good. It just means that most people liked it. Most people like a lot of things that aren't necessarily good. The easier path is much more difficult than the hard path. And as we've established, um, just looking at the, the few books that we've looked at as far as reviewing art and reviewing story concepts. Um, it, it's the, the deeper you get into the weeds, the, the harder it is you have to move the machete and that's work. And sometimes it's easier like in the X-Men Wildcats book, just to kind of go with the flow and let that art slip slide away. And that's, that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm talking about here with the, with the ash conformity issue. It's, Sometimes is it easier and do we find ourselves taking the easier path simply because we don't have to think? Do we do people go out and buy Tom King Batman books simply because it's a Batman book and that's what I've always done? How much are we responsible as consumers for the material that we're handed? And how much are the creators responsible for having that actor effect of creating the number of people in the room that are telling us, no, 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 this is good. And they're putting, arguably, you could argue that in the comic industry and in entertainment, you've got pe people trapped in the middle, that their, their entire bottom line is based on presenting that these things will be good. If you're a theater owner, you want Captain Marvel to be a good movie. It is, your bottom line is better off if Captain Marvel is a good movie and everybody wants to go see it. If you're an LCS owner, your bottom line is if the latest Tom King Batman book is, whether it's a pile of garbage or not, is a good seller. That's the false actor in the concept. Those are the pressure points. They are saying, yes, buy this. It is good. But they have an inherent gain. So who can you trust? Well, you can go on Twitter. You can read reviews on Twitter. But even within Twitter, you have group dynamics that are present. You have group think that applies. You have pressure that is applied. Um, it, whether, it doesn't matter where that pressure comes from or how the dynamic of that pressure is applied. That 10, 80, 10 concept will always apply. You're always going to have some people that just go along simply because they don't want to have any pressure back at them. You're going to have most people that will be agreeable simply for the fact that, well, the majority seem to be going with it. And then you're always going to have that group that questions and doubts. So where do you, where, how do you take this? How do you apply it? How do you, how do you take this concept and apply it to entertainment, to apply it to your daily life, to apply it to current events? Well, I would, I would say that be mindful of your time on social media and be mindful that every minute that you spend on social media, you're being influenced by those people on your feed. You're being influenced by those things that you read. And are the people that you're reading worthy of your time? Are those people that you're spending your free time, your, your finite resource of time, time is such a valuable resource. How much are you spending reading the thoughts of others instead of formulating your own? How much are you in that conformity experiment and listening to the actors that are answering which line is the same length as the line on the card rather than thinking about it for yourself? I think everybody could stand to do a little bit of pausing in their daily routine and maybe pause 15 seconds before that next tweet, maybe even 30 seconds and consider what do I think about this? What do I consider about this? Is my retweet, do I agree with this when I retweet it? Do I agree with this concept that I'm going to tweet on this Facebook post that I'm going to share? Or am I doing this because I know I'm going to farm likes and I'm going to get people to agree with me? In fact, what is this concept that I'm retweeting even referencing? What, what is, what's the deeper meaning of this? Is there a deeper meaning or is it just, is it just frivolous fun? Well, do you, what, 
what value is there to waste on frivolous fun other other than entertainment? And if you're going to talk about entertainment, shouldn't your entertainment be for you, not for a simple contact high of a little like or a retweet? So that's really all I had. It was uh, kind of a disjointed thought structure that formed there while I was pulling some fly fishing equipment out of the shed on the farm. So uh, I appreciate you joining me. Um, if you have any, I'll check the chat because I promised I would try to check the chat more. But yeah, if, um, if you know, please like, subscribe, ring the bell, share the link out. Always look for, uh, you know, some interesting thoughts. If you have any ideas for anything for me to comment on, I'd appreciate it. I'd like this channel to be more about, more than just me putting red circles over comic art. I'd like to talk about some things and whether they be semi-deep concepts like this, which I really didn't feel hit the, the whole, uh, the concept of maybe as much as I wanted to, but, um, you know, just hit me up, DM me on Twitter. DMs are open. Um, comment on the videos. Let me know. I'd be happy to provide some different content. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, divergent from my normal comic book routine and I shall return before the end of the week with something with red circles or rectangles. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening.